Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omon and today I will review the third studio album by the alternative slash Britpop band Blur. Uh, the third studio album, like I said, Park Life, which is which was a very still kind of is to this day a very uh, varied and just uh, creative disc and a pretty important one for the genre. Um, did a lot of Britpop. Uh, Britpop was in full effect. The the big four of that scene, you know, you gotta have a big four of all of them. Um, you know, obviously Oasis, which definitely maybe was a big rival of this band, the the album as well. So you know, they were high on the tails of Oasis and vice versa. Um, and you also had bands like Pulp and Suede that tried to do their own thing. I believe Suede had a self-titled album out in 1993. And I believe Dogman Star also in 94. I'm not sure. I haven't really listened to Suede in a long time. So uh, that is a thing that came out in 94, I believe, with the ash crack on the cover. Gotta love that. And Pulp with His and Hers, which was also released in 1994, I believe. And the year after fucking, um, uh, how's it called again? Co Common People, I believe. Um, you know, that was the single, of course, but was the album called Common People? I think it was. It was called Common People, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. They were like, that's the biggest hit of arguably our career, let's just call that the album. So that's kind of it, honestly. So, um, yeah, they, you know, the Britpop bands, those, bi those big four Britpop bands were pretty smart to release albums pretty like yearly almost because the, you know, they just had the mentality striking while the iron was hot and Blur had the same thing, you know, their music was not necessarily really like progressive or really difficult. So, you know, they could just like pump it out and just, you know, call it a day, but they still made some pretty like legit Britpop music with some like alt rock and art rock ten tendencies where Spill was more of a like really like Oasis the really straightforward band they were more like a rock and roll band than anything else Pulp was like really full blown Britpop so you know arguably the most Britpop esque band out of the four is Pulp because they were true and true Britpop whereas with Suede was more I would say pop rock in a way, they were more poppy I think, whereas Blur is more artsy, which I, pre I prefer that, they were more art rock, alternative rock, that's, you know, that's why I give them the edge in this, um, in this case, if you would ask me what band do I prefer, I prefer Blur over all of those bands for me. Um, yeah, and Oasis is more straightforward, like I said, more straight, straightforward rock and roll band, which, uh, you know, is a good thing too. It's it's, it's a bit too like uh, straightforward for my taste, but it's still you know it's still great music. I think I still love their first two albums, and uh, I think the the master plan is a great compilation. But uh, after that, the band kind of went to shit after the Britpop movement, and you know Blur instead of like still trying to do their Britpop sound, they kind of strived away from that in the later years with um, the Great Escape, which is arguably. Their worst album up until that point, but still a good album, I think, if you don't count the debut. And then they just pretty much went into a more alternative art rock kind of sound, which I prefer of the band, that sound. And I love the album before this one, Modern Life is Rubbish, which is arguably the greatest Brick Pop album ever made, if you ask me. It's it's an amazing album, I love that album. Uh, but this is a good, this is a good one too. I really enjoyed it. Um, first, I was kind of like this thing is kind of cheesing me out because it is from 1994, and you know, not necessarily that every album from 1994 is necessarily like dated to me, because you know, um, Nine Inch Nails, Nine Inch Nails is um, the Downward Spiral was released in this year, and it still sounds like a fucking new discovery to me every time I put it on. You know, it's. That's how masterful of a record it is, but you know, that's Nine Inch Nails, that's like a completely different ballpark, so... You know, Britpop hasn't really aged the best because... It just sounds really cheesy and really techy to me. And the Britpop sound in general, but you know, you can still make great music out of that, I mean, look at Prince. 
Prince is, you know, it's fucking Prince. But a lot of his music sounds from the 80s, you know, because of, the, because of all of those sins and because of all the, you know, the, the sexual inappropriate lyrics, which are not so PC nowadays. So that kind of dates it a bit, but it's still great music. You know, if you return to it, you still, you still bop to it. So there you go. Um, but yeah, Park Life, uh, Night 94, like I said, 52 minutes, pretty consistent record. We have 16 songs on there, which is a bit less, I, I think, but... You know, I'm more of a um, short track listing, long songs kind of guy, you know, prog essentially, rather than a lot of short songs and kind of punk oriented. That's, you know, the exact opposite of punk or the exact, yeah, punk, but the exact exact opposite of prog, which is punk. And if you know me, I hate punk, I can't fucking stand it, but uh, Blur is kind of a middle line here, like they're not necessarily a punk band. Because that's fucking retarded to say. So, <clears throat> Blur is not a punk band, but they do have some punk tendencies. They do have some really short songs and some really like kind of hectic songs, where they just kind of like it's it feels more like a joke to me than that, that they actually like are a punk band or something like with uh, with some of the shorter songs on this album. So we have Girls and Boys, which is uh, a pretty good song, I think. But you know, it's it's kind of one of those Prince instances where. Um, you hear it and you think, oh yeah, this, you know, I like the song, but the production is kind of tacky to me and, uh, you know, the lyrics are pretty repetitive, but that's for most of this album, so that's not a big gripe necessarily. So Girls and Boys is pretty much like a perfect opening track because it's just really catchy, it has a great beat behind it. Uh, it hasn't aged the best, but, it, you know, it is a great beat, it does catch your attention, so... That's kind of it, honestly. Uh, pretty catchy song, not necessarily my favorite because the, like I said, the production has aged a little bit, and you know the the lyrics are also kind of fuck all. But you know, it it is more of a Britpop anthem than it really is anything else, so I can't blame it too much. Now we have Tracy Jacks, which I believe this song or one of the yeah no no, no one of the later songs. Um, you know, Alex had it on his fucking playlist, and I was like, "This is the weakest song of the album. Why do you have this in there?" But you know, it's 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 in whatever. So um, he might have changed it. Like I, like I recently said to him, "Chemical World is the best song ever," and he probably has Chemical World on his playlist right now. Spoiler alert: I have it on my playlist too. So no, not a big surprise there because I'm a huge modern modern life is rubbish guy because it's just a title. I'm like. This is a perfect title. I can relate to this title. Modern Life is fucking bullshit. Give this album to me, please. It's so it's so perfect for me. I fucking love it. Um, but this record, you know, it's it's near to, it's near perfect too. I would say it's it's a bit you know it's a bit more cheesier and a bit more appropriate for the Britpop sound, I guess. So it's more perfect perfect for the genre, but less ideal for me. But you know. If you want to have the, if you want to have a mass market, if you want to profit, you got to think about the market and you know, not always think about the fans. But you know, it was an underrated record. But let's let's keep it on the record b before this fucking review goes on forever. Uh, Tracy Jack's good song for twenty uh, for twenty blazes. Uh, pretty consistent song. Uh, kind of sounds like Girls and Boys to me, but without the the production it's just more of a straightforward rock song with the Tracy jugs and the ooh yeah you know that um it's kind of a cliche but it is you know this album is good cheese to me like it is pretty cheesy but it is good cheese so i do i do dig i do dig it i do dig blur then we have end of a century and i believe this was the really um was this a really emotional song no no, no that was to the end End of a century, how did this one go again? I believe it's kind of the same, uh, also kind of emotional, but um, it was definitely perfected, uh, you know, at the middle section of the album, which we will get into a bit later. Um, yeah, whenever, whenever I hear this song, I definitely remember it. I'm a fucking scrub. I've heard this album like a shitload of times, and I can't fucking remember it for the life of me. Um... Fucking hell. I mean, I do I do love it though, I do love this album, but goddamn. Like, if I just play a snippet of it, I, I probably get it, 
if it doesn't like if the video doesn't get copyright strikes. The good of century, the end of a century, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's kind of similar to, to the end, so yeah. That's kind of it, honestly. A good song, I like it, but yeah, my description was pretty much dead on. Just kind of like a, a discount to the end uh, song. Lovely song, we will get to that song. Park Life, uh, pretty much the most. Iconic song of this album, the dun, 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 Park Lo you know, with Phil Daniels, who was, uh, who was, I believe, a actor in the Tommy movie by The Who. Um, yeah, I believe he played in the movie. He is a pretty, pretty famous actor, I believe, or Tommy or Quadrophenia, one of those movies, but he played in that. Um, yeah, that was pretty good, I think. Uh, he is mostly funny, then he is really good at singing. He is mostly a spoken word uh, kind of guy on there. He's not really singing. Yeah, um, I think this song is a bit cheesy. It's it's a bit overblown, but that's kind of the point of it. It's not really like musically, it's not really interesting. But I do think that the you know the 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 message is pretty funny. The the fucking how park life goes and what goes on in daily park life and. Just how it goes down over there. It's it's a pretty funny description if you read into the lyrics and if you like hear Phil Daniels talk. You know he, he's a pretty coherent guy, so you can definitely hear what he's saying. Probably more more coherent than me. Fucking all. Now we got Bank Holiday, which was um, a really fun song for me. I fucking blasted this whenever I, you know, fucking played it. It's pretty much just this really short kind of punky song nearly two minutes long and you know i always love whenever alternative bands kind of like shit or they parody punk music because they literally can create a punk song in like a fucking minute or so and to me you know you can say oh it sounds like shit because you're parodying punk music but for me it actually sounds good because the production you know the production on this album is pretty good I usually really love the production in Blur, on Blur albums, and this is no exception. It's arguably on its best on Park Loud. The production on this album is pretty good. And it sounds pretty good on this album too, on the on the song particularly. On this song especially, Bang Holiday. I really I really like the production, love like, it's it's a punk song, I like it. Um, yeah, so good song, good product, you know. Punk, take fucking lessons. If you have some good production behind it, and if you have a good singer, and if you have some like fucking cringy fucking metal behind it, like sometimes this song fucking goes metal in a way. Uh, punk, take fucking notes. This is how you fucking do a punk song. Like, you know, um, you know, Misfits with like famous monsters, shit like that, like crossover trash, SOD, speak English or die, you know, shit like that. It's like, Punk that has some metal fucking crunch to it, man. Like, it is possible to make punk a good thing, but yeah, you know, or for me at least, because it's basically alternative metal, but you know, um, it's it's pretty much a punk song, or it's pretty much an alternative metal song, um, hidden as like, a, uh, hidden as a punk song, so that's kind of it, honestly. I do, love me, I do love me some alternative metal, so I do fuck with it, of course, but not a huge fan of punk, but this song pulls it off pretty well. I jammed this pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, I just jammed this pretty hard in my in my room, so there you go. Then we have Bad Ad, which was a really enjoyable song, really quiet, really like um, quiet after the storm, as opposed to quiet, quiet before the storm or shit like that. Really uh, moody, meaty, meaty, moody. That was the word I was trying to avoid, fuck no. A really moody, kind of peaceful kind of song. M meaty was me trying to say peaceful and moody at the same time. Really moody and peaceful kind of song. Really just relaxing to listen to. Yeah, I can't really recommend this song enough. Really, really, really. Uh, fucking really shoot me. I really want that. Really, really, really. But bad at, yeah, it's a bad ass song. I love it. Really? Yeah, really. Fucking hell. Stop fucking saying that word. Fucking, yeah. Bad ad, good song. 
I lost it. Yeah, I don't want to say really again, but there you go. Uh, the, the Depths Collector, like it's really bothered me how much I say really, so I I just don't want to say it, <laughs> don't, don't want to say it, but the Depth Collector is an instrumental and this is kind of the, the middle section of the album. I do think that this was a pretty good instrumental for the most part. I enjoyed it for the most part and yeah, this instrumental, it's two minutes long, it doesn't drag on for too much. It's a pretty good instrumental, I would say. Yeah, not a lot to say there. Blur just kind of shows off their production value and their uh, instrumental prowess, and they put, put it off pretty well. And now I'm going to overuse the word pretty, because I don't want to say really anymore. And then, then we have Far Out, which was, yeah, kind of a short song, kind of goes back to the Bank Holiday kind of route, kind of, kind of to the punk mentality. Pretty good song, uh, Far Out, I believe this song was a bit more heavier, ballsier than Bank Holiday. Granted, Bank Holiday was already a pretty uh, nifty song, so Far Out is kind of, you know, going to the end of that, like, what's the, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's it kind of takes Blur's heaviness to the to the brink. It it brings the Britpop heaviness to the brink of music. I would say something like that. I really enjoy that. Uh, pretty cool to see, especially whenever you get this like moody uh, upcoming song, which you know Bank Bank Holiday had as well. So Blur kind of has the grunge mentality right there. Like they're pretty heavy on this song, and they're pretty, you know, soft on on the next one, and now I'm overusing the word pretty, fuck me. Speaking of pretty songs, then we have To The End, which is one of my favorite songs from the album. I really love the the kind of synth, the, the kind of Britpop-esque sound that the song has, it has kind of a romantic vibe to it. Kind of a Pink Panther vibe, if you ask me, a pretty, like, just pretty nice Pink Panther vibe to the whole album, I really like that. Yeah, a very enjoyable song. I really enjoyed it. And the Pink Panther vibe. It's pretty much the Pink Panther song of the album. Yeah, that's kind of a bit, honestly. Like, listen to it for yourself. It really sounds like the Pink Panther song. Really enjoyable. And I do fuck with the Pink Panther song. So, Pink Panther, Pink Panther. I'm trying to say that five times. It's an enjoyable song. I really like it. And then we have London Lost, which was Alex's favorite, favorite song of the band ever question mark or it was on his playlist which I don't get this is like my least favorite song on the album you know it's not a bad song you have that dun, dun, du -ga -du -ga -du, du -du -du -ga you know you have that it, it, you know this this song is kind of the definition of my problem with this album because I love it I think it's a great album but my problems I love it <laughs> yeah kind of contradicting but what I mean with that is that I do love this album it's kind of like, you know, Prince in a way, like, it is pretty dated because of, like, the hand claps um, in, in, like, the refrain. Um, just how Damon sings and the, oh, oh. Like, Blur clear creates a lot of things on this record. Like, the haze, haze, haze are a lot in rap songs right now, which is, like, my least favorite thing ever. The, the fucking haze in rap songs with outer tune binder and shit like that. I hate that. And... Um, the hand claps and the O's and the A's, so... So Blur did do a lot of shit on there, but I mean... That has been done for a long time, though. I can't say that Blur created that, but, you know... There were other people at the scene doing that as well, you know, more like mainstream pop acts. But uh, Blur did something interesting with it, I think. Albeit very cheesy, but it was still interesting, I think. Uh, well, interesting is kind of the wrong word, I think. It, it, it was um, good. It sounded good. It was a good sound, but it definitely kind of cheesy and dated. Um, one thing that I do really love about the song, though, is the, the kind of like the final kind of shred kind of part. Not, not per se shred, but the, the jam session at the ending. Like, it just, like, it fucking rips at the ending, and I fucking love that. It just goes on and on and on. It's, it basically becomes like an alternative drone rock song, which... I don't usually fuck with drone, but if you get the right tone with drone, I do fuck with that kind of drone. You know, if you have like a Melvin drone or something. If you have a Melvin's drone behind your music, I'll fuck with that, but 
I don't really fuck with a lot of other uh, drone music like Suno or the Angelic Process. I'm not really a huge fan of that kind of drone because it's not the right kind of drone for me. It just sounds too noisy for my for my taste. But Melvis is good in my book because they are more of like a sludge metal band, so do what I wish for. Um, yeah, then we have Trouble in the Message Center, which is probably one of my favorite songs of the album. This song just fucking shreds. Really great song. Uh, it's kind of a hard rock, almost heavy metal song in a way. Not, not necessarily heavy metal, but it's definitely going towards a hard rock vibe, I think. That's probably the best thing I can describe it as. Really great track. I really enjoyed it. And I should really shoot myself because the fucking use is all that word. But yeah, one of my favorite songs from the album. I fucking love it. Yeah, I'm just gonna swear and self say that word is better. But yeah, I think one of the best of the albums. I really enjoy it. I should shoot myself. Fuck no. Just a great heavy sound. Great, yeah, love it. Now we have Clover over Dover, and I might have missed this song or something because. I think at the last part of this album I kind of dozed off because I was like, I was fucking <coughs> throwing my shoulder, how do you say that, uh, throwing my shoulder out or something, I don't know how you say that, like I was acting like a crazy person when Trouble in the Message Center came on, I fucking love that song, and after that the, the, the fuel, sorry for that if you saw that, the fuel in my engine kind of ran out after uh, Trouble in the Message Center, so I kind of just dozed off eventually, I kind of like uh, did like uh, a little tuck for myself. So I kind of missed out on most of these songs. I do remember the last two songs, but I was kind of like, I'm kind of vague over the track, tracks 12, 13 and 14. Which I might have to skip over. Clover over though. It is a really funny title though. But I can't really remember it right now. Magic America. Same thing. Uh, and Jubilee. I, I can't. Yeah. I can't tell. Even though I've heard this record like. I think. 10 plus times or something. I've played it a lot. Um, before this. You know. So there you go. Um, I do remember this is a low of course. That was a very emotional song. 5 minutes long. Um, yeah, which is actually the longest song of the album, five minutes long. Who, who would have guessed? I believe, yeah, I believe Blur did do longer songs eventually, but you know, it was they were still kind of punk oriented or punk. They were still kind of like you know more poppy, more pop rock in a way, so shorter songs. And this is a low is a very good song, I think. It was really enjoyable. I really liked it. Yeah, it's just a very art rock kind of almost progressive sound in a way really uh kind of bleak kind of somber in tone this is a low which is ironically one of the best songs of the album so it's you know it's a highlight that that, that fucking joke then. yeah kind of like a watch mojo joke in there fucking all great song one of the best of the albums i really love it it's probably my favorite single of the album if it was a single i'm not even sure actually yeah, it was a single. It was the the second last single. Yeah, it was the last single released though in 1995. And Tracy Jax was released as the last single, but it was only released in the US as a single. Interesting, interesting. So This Is Low was the last single released in 1995, so there you go. Great single, I really love it. Yeah, like I said, one of the best of the albums. Really somber, great tone. And... Yeah, some of your mega compilation of me saying fucking really in the song, like or in the song in this, on this fucking album review, like like and really, my two my two most hated words that I keep fucking saying, fucking kill me. And then we have lot one one oh five, which is a kind of pointless instrumental for me. They could have ended it at this is a low, which would have been a pretty ironic highlight, you know, having this is a low as the final song, and you know. Ironically, being it pretty much the best song of the album in a way, so that that would that would have been a pretty funny you know ending to the album. But they have this LOT one hundred five song. Uh, how does it go again? I'm not, I'm not even sure, but it doesn't really matter because it's not really that great of a song. I think I just think it's kind of whatever. So 
And that's kind of deaths, I think. It's not really that interesting, but it's not awful in a way, so it's kind of an honestly. So, yeah, we have girls and boys. Uh, yeah, let's go over the track listing one more time. Girls and Boys is great but a bit dated. Tracy Jacks is enjoyable. End of a Century is good, but it was done better, it was perfected later. Park Life is good but cheesy. Bank Holiday is great but too short. Well, yeah, it didn't need to be longer, it was pretty, pretty perfect for its time. Bad Ad is really, really nice, really enjoyed it, really uh, pleasant uh, melodies and shit. Nice, nice instrumentation, speaking is hard. The Death Collector is a nice instrumental, albeit a bit on the short side, but you know, it was a fun instrumental. Far Out was good, although forgettable for me. To the End is great, one of my favorites of the album. London Loves is cheesy, but good cheese for me, but still a bit dated and cheesy, like uh, arguably the whole album, like Park Life, the, the title track. Trouble in, Me in the Message Center, amazing song. Uh, Clover over Dover, I dozed off after that, so nah. Magic America, Jubilee, like I said. I have to listen to the album a bit. I haven't really listened to this album shit low, but it has been a while since I've heard it, so back off. This is a low, amazing song, one of my favorites of the album, and Lot 105 is whatever, it's, it's pretty pointless. So. Great album. I actually really enjoy all of these songs. I don't really mind any of them, even Clover of Dover up until Jubilee, which were good songs. They didn't offend me, but I can't really remember them so far, um, you know, as time goes. So, oh, and actually, all three were written by Blur, the whole band, except Far Out by Alex James. So, Far Out was written by that guy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Written by them. Uh, what the fuck? Japanese, uh, girls and boys, Japanese bonus track, Pet Shop Boys. The Pet Shop Boys remake. Did, did the fucking Pet Shop Boys remake this fucking song? They might have done that. Oh my god. Pet Shop Boys, what have you done? I've not heard that song, so... I have not heard the Pet Shop Boys version, but if that would be a thing... God help us all. I don't, I don't actually mind that, but... <laughs> <coughs> Imagine how tacky it would sound to them, you know, it, it already sounds pretty cheesy on the zone, let alone the Pet Shop Boys. Um, I really lo love this album, I think it's really great. Um, I don't really have a least favorite of this album, like my only real complaint with the album is like, I would say the instrumentals are kind of balls to be honest, the, or well the depth collection was actually pretty enjoyable, the, the Lot 105. If you can really call it a song, that's probably my least favorite because it was just kind of a pointless outro, I think. Like, that does sound good though. Fucking hell, like I don't... Like I do vaguely remember how it went again. Yeah, it kind of sounds like a fucking bingo tune or something. Oh yeah, yeah, and then that's really heavy punk kind of outro. I mean, even that was enjoyable, you know, it's fucking gimmicky as hell, but it's fun, you know, it's it's just fucking fun, so. Uh, even even that instrumental, oh, hey, wait, they were saying, da -da 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 you know, they were, they were making sounds right there. So it's an instrumental. Hey, I, I can edit that on Wikipedia because they were harmonizing together. Is that an instrumental? Hmm, X for doubt. Go on Wikipedia and change that shit for me. Well, well don't, I don't care, whatever. Um, but if you do that, you have no life. So, great album. Um, yeah, don't, I actually really enjoy all of these songs. Yeah, the only flaw I really have is that the instrumentals could have been longer or Combined maybe that would have been good. They, they kind of seem pointless, you know as both individual tracks to me at least uh, But besides that I really enjoyed every song on this album, you know beside it being a bit cheesy and dated for me This was a great record So I would give it a 9.7 out of 10 near flawless bird pop album I think the only flaw I really have with it is some of the instruments are kind of iffy for me and the record hasn't aged the best but besides that 
I really love this album. So if you haven't listened to it, I can't recommend it enough. Great album by Great Band. Park Life, let me know what you think about it in the comments down below and I will see you in the next video. Peace.